Today we're going to be doing hitting tips, and if you guys are struggling to hit the ball, make sure you guys watch this video all the way through, as I have plenty of tips for you guys to help you. If you guys love the content, please make sure you guys like and subscribe on the video, and let's get into it. Alright guys, so on this season, I am currently hitting 462, I have an on base of 475, and I have a slug of 1.05, just over 1. I am a pretty good hitter. I would consider myself a pretty good hitter. My record right now is 29 and 3. I am rated 826. You guys can't see that. I have it highlighted there. Uh, my OPS, 1550. As you can see, the pitching is a little bit of a struggle. Obviously, we're going to get to that in a minute of why that is. But anyways, beside the point, I would consider myself a pretty decent hitter. I'm going to show you guys today how to get better at hitting, how I got better at hitting, and kind of what I look for, what my approach is, and some tips and drills that you can do that are going to help you get better at this game. Because I know I've gotten a lot of questions asking, how do you hit the fastball? How do you hit outlier? How do you place your PCI so well? How do you do this? How do you do that? That happens a lot in my chat, so we're gonna cover it all in this video today. All right guys, so first things first, we're gonna talk about the settings and what I use when I hit. So at the home screen, you're gonna go start, settings, gameplay, and we're gonna go over to offense. Now, as you can see, some of this stuff, I don't even look at. Uh, swing input, you definitely wanna use buttons. And you always want a normal swing. So you always want to hit the A button if you're on Xbox, X button if you're on PlayStation. That is the best swing in the game. You don't want to use anything else. I promise the contact swings don't go anywhere. And power swings don't really help much. And they shrink your PCI for absolutely no reason. So that is not the way to go on this. Hitting interface. This is the most important tip. If you're going to take anything from this video, take this. Zone hitting. That is the most important tip I can give you. Learn how to use zone hitting. You must, 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 must learn how to use zone hitting in order to, to give yourself a skill in this game of hitting. Unless you want to just hit RNG, which means you're just guessing at that point whether you get a hit, you're going to want to use zone hitting. PCI Anchor, I've played around with this a little bit. You're going to want to put this on free. I like the free. I'm going to explain why here in a little bit. I was kind of put onto this by a couple other YouTubers, so um, that's kind of one thing that I have kind of been playing with recently that I really like. So put it on free, PCI anchor. This is uh, depending on whatever you want to do. If you want to set your PCI in the same spot every time and you only want to click it once, set it for game. If you want to do it for each individual batter, do each batter. If you want to do it each inning, you can customize it in that way. I have it on batter. I don't really use the anchor much, but I'm going to show you guys kind of what I use it for in a bit when I get into the custom practice, but that's what I would suggest. I would do it with batter. Batting dots are obviously on. PCI, I have it on. I don't turn it off. It's there for me. Diamonds is what I use, and I change my color to cyan. A lot of top players use just diamonds, just circles. They use the bat. I've been using the bat recently. You'll see this in the gameplay as well that I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit, that I am using the bat, and I did put up 28 runs. This is a new addition to the game that I haven't really gotten to use a ton of yet. I really like the bat on 40%. That's kind of what I've been using the last couple days, but for the entirety of the game, for most of those stats, I've been using just diamonds on 70% on cyan. I like the lighter colors in the game just because it blends with the ball. It helps me match the ball up with the PCI. I'm not really sure exactly if that makes sense, but everybody has a preference in this game, and definitely there's so many different PCI inners and outers you can use that that is all preference to you. This is just what I use, and if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't work for you, there's plenty of different options. Like I said, the bat PCI might not work for everybody, so try diamonds. If you don't like diamonds, put on a wedge. Try diamonds and wedge. A lot of people like that PCI. If you don't like the color cyan, fine. Put it on yellow. Put it on white. Put it on black. You know, there's... There, I know a lot of the top guys use a bunch of different colors. Personally, I don't use anything other than cyan, and right now I'm using the bat. I only change my center. That's basically what I change, especially when I'm in a slump. If I'm slumping, I'll change it to altitude and I'll actually add an inner. So I feel like I have a little bit more. So I'll put that wedge inner on. So I feel like I have a little bit more room, but I feel like right now I've been hitting the ball so well with the bat that I don't really need to put that on. So I'm going to leave the bat on 40% transparency. I don't have the PCI fade out at all. Like I said, that's all preference. Guess pitch off, vibration off. I hate vibration, so I turn it off. That's preference based too. That's just something I'm used to. But that's my settings for hitting. So we're gonna go ahead and back out here. Next thing you guys wanna know, you guys wanna get really familiar with this custom practice mode. Custom practice is the mode that you get better in. This, That's all it is. Custom practice is the best mode to get better in. I always like to face Jacob, or not Jacob DeGrom, Corbin Burns. 
just because he's got the sinker, he's got the cutter, he's got everything you'd want to hit as a hitter, and he's got the best pitch mix, so that's kind of why I always choose Corbin Burns. I always choose the Angels so I can load up at Mike Trout. This is something that I do personally that I don't know that a lot of people really do. I always load up at my home ballpark just so I get the familiarity of the park when I am hitting, so I can see it from the batter's eye, so I can see how it looks at home, that kind of thing. That's something that I do personally that really has improved my game. I think personally is hitting at my home stadium. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna go to practice type, you're gonna go to batting, and obviously Corbin Burns is gonna be hitting or pitching, and you're gonna put Trout in to hit. Now, this is where a lot of work gets done. If you guys want to also, this is the settings that you guys kind of want to look at here. If you got most of the time, I'm struggling with cutters and I'm struggling with sinkers. And that's what I think 99.9% .9 of the community is going to struggle with. When they start hitting on Hall of Fame, if they start hitting on Legend, they start hitting even on All-Star for some of you guys. This is the th these are the two pitches that struggle the most for you guys. So, what I'll do when I just start, this is how I warm up. So, I'll take the inner part of the plate and I'll take the inside part of the plate and I'll just start tracking pitches. So, we're going to go ahead and turn the gameplay up to legend also. That is one more thing you guys are going to want to do is turn it on legend. So your PCI is a wreck it's accurately represented and we're just gonna we're gonna track it we're not gonna swing at all we're just gonna track the pitch ball and you're gonna want to call it out ball strike ball strike ball strike on what it is if it's a ball you're gonna want to call it ball if you want to strike you want to call it a strike so we're gonna watch it here strike the quicker you can pick that up the quicker you're gonna be able to track the ball I do this for about five minutes before I load into ranked ever so this is something that's really been helping me ball oh see I still mess it up so like that this is something that really helps me personally it just helps me get warmed up and seeing pitches that are fast ball so this is just something that you can do for five minutes and you can move your pci with it too you know just move your pci work on getting it on the inside because that's where a lot of people if you can't hit it they're just gonna throw it ball strike okay there you go see this is what this is why you work on it because i've recently started doing this drill i actually got this drill from zazzy um shout out zazzy I'm going to leave his link down below as well. Uh, this is kind of like a drill that he had talked about in his thing, and he is one of the best players in the world as well. So this is a drill that I like to do, ball. So this is something that I like to do just to get loose, just to kind of watch the ball. Uh, Juke, who is another player that is a top player in the world, he's also in the chat, Strike. And he uses a thing called Tempo, as you can see mentioned in chat. I am live streaming this as well, so... I'm helping out as many people as I can. Ball. Basically, what tempo is, is it's the it's how quick your guy kicks his leg. And the essential part of this is if it's a faster pitch, he kicks it earlier. If it's a slower pitch, he doesn't. So kick it as early. Let's put it that way. I don't use tempo because I, I just don't have the experience using it. I have never tried to use it. I don't like it. Ball. So I'm always a read-react kind of guy. He likes tempo. There's definitely different ways of approaching the plate, especially when it comes to legend. So now that we've seen a few pitches here, strike. We're going to go ahead and try to swing on the inner half of the plate. And we're going to see what happens here. We're going to see if we can track the pitch and see what happens. Not a terrible first swing. We're out in front of it at least. So that's something that you guys are going to want to start learning to is timing. And if you guys are struggling with timing, that's going to be the hardest part of Legend. As you can see, it, it's hard to pick up the cutter and sinker. So with timing, you guys, the biggest thing with that, if I'm struggling with timing, like let's say I'm late to everything, right? What I do is a little bit different than what a lot of people will do. If I'm late to literally everything, like I cannot touch a single baseball. I don't care what it is. I can't touch it. It's not working. Everything I've tried doesn't work. I'm gonna go into my settings. Actually, scratch that. I'm gonna go to my sliders. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna go to CPU fastball speed. I'm gonna turn it all the way up. And you might ask, why is it that if I can't catch it, why am I turning this up? I'm not gonna save it because I already have it saved. Reason why you're turning this up is because if you can hit or if you can even come close to hitting this on legend, 
you're gonna be able to slow the ball down so much online and it's, it's gonna seem so slow to you that it's not even gonna make a difference like it, it's gonna make a huge difference in your game i promise and you don't even have to put it on legend to put this on all the way up you can put it on hall of fame and put it all the way up if you want and you guys are gonna see the difference here in this i like doing this if i'm just super behind on like everything like my reaction is terrible I'm not hitting the, I'm not seeing the ball, I'm not, nothing. Like, everything's bad. Everything looks bad, and everything feels bad, to where my timing is so late that I can't even hit the baseball. So I'll do the same drill. Same exact drill. Cutter, sinker, inside. You know it's coming. This actually helps PCI placement too. And you see how fast that is, right? Like, that is so fast. If you can turn on that, you can that will make legend pitch speed seem so much slower or any difficulty that you're playing on so it i mean look at how fast that is like that is unbelievably fast if you can hit this then you can hit anything i promise you that this helps me just be able to hit a ball out in front because the timing of this you have to see it so fast and that one i didn't even move my pci it's really hard to talk and do this but that is basically what I'll do if I'm really struggling to be behind with the pitch. That's that's the biggest help that I can do and give you guys with the timing is if you're just late on everything, turn up the turn up the slider speed and make sure that you guys are like like if you guys want to do it on All-Star, that's fine. Do it on All-Star. If you guys want to do it on Legend, do it on Legend, that's fine. Now, if you're getting cheated up and in, like if somebody figures out, "Hey, he can't hit up and in." This is what the free the free anchor is. So, as you can see, I can anchor it all the way up there. I'm not even touching. I'm not even, I'm not touching the right stick at all. See, I'm not even touching it. Watch. Not even touching it. But I'm, I'm already up there. So, that's, that's the biggest thing. I do got to set it every pitch. We'll see if he gives me one up and in. See, I'm not even touching it at all. He gave me one a little bit lower, but that, beside the point, that's what that free anchor does. So, if you see somebody cheating you up here... And you want to cheat it up there so you can get your PCI there, go ahead and do it. Why wouldn't you? It doesn't make any sense not to. You know, why, why wouldn't you? It gives you an advantage. It helps you. Um, same thing with, like, low pitches. If they're cheating you low and in, and, you, and you're just late on everything low and in, and you can't get to it, there. You got to it right there. That's an early swing down the line. That might be a base hit right there. You know, that's something you guys can use to your advantage as, as something that is a tool to use. I don't use it a whole lot. I think I've used it maybe twice ever since I learned about it. But that is one thing that I will use that helps me, you know, if I'm just if I'm just getting cheated inside, if I'm getting cheated outside, if he's just throwing in a certain place and I'm picking up his tendencies, that is one thing I am going to use quite often when it comes to that. Another thing I like to do is I'll go to the Texas Rangers and I'll face Jacob DeGrom. This is the only really outlier pitcher I'll go face. Um, because he's really the only one that throws like 103 that I really know of that is a nasty 103, 104. So I'll come in here and I'll just be like, okay, I just want to see outlier. And I still have my sliders up, keep in mind. I just want to see outlier inside and outside. All right. This is all I want to see. And then I want to work on getting my PCI. I want to time this to get to my PCI there. That is so fast, y'all. Like, y'all, like, I slam my PCI over here. Like, it is so hard not to slam your PCI when you're seeing a pitch that fast. But I will say, that is one thing you're going to struggle to do at first, is slam your PCI. You guys want to glide your PCIs to this. You don't want to slam it to it. Obviously, the pitch speeds are never going to be this fast, ever. But, you guys are going to want to not slam your PCI. What I mean by slamming, it just... You can hear that just slamming it everywhere just slam it up there slam it over here it creates stick drift it creates a lot of different things that just aren't good habits those aren't good habits to have you're gonna like as you can see just slamming it down like that it just it literally screws up your thumbstick like i i do not recommend at all i would never do that it's just something that you guys need to learn to start controlling your pci it's it's kind of like a first person shooter right you don't want to just you know turn your pc or turn on the highest sensitivity and just try to go all cracked out and everything you want to be able to be controlled at the same time you also want to be able to get there fast but you want to be controlled that's the same concept here 
So I'm going to turn the pitch speeds back down and we're going to go back in here. When I'm getting warmed up, I always load those sinkers. I look at them. I look at, at at least 20 sinkers before I go into ranked seasons. That's typically what I'll do. I'll try to call strike ball and then I'll do cutters away because cutters away are something else that's very common that you have to sit back on as, as a hitter. And a lot of people, they like to roll it over, you know, so and Juke can attest to that as well if he's still in chat. You know, just work on cutters, okay? The outer half, the outer half of the plate here. You're going to work on this for like 10, 20 pitches before you load up. And that was a ball. And I'm, I'm still on it. Like, that's that's an out to the first baseman, but I got I to gotta be able to let that go. That was nasty. I didn't quite get there. I was late. But I'd rather be late than early on those. We want to send that to the opposite field. I didn't move my PCI again. It's hard to do this and talk. So this is another thing that you guys can work on. This is another drill that I do before I load into ranked seasons. Especially now since I'm starting to approach the higher difficulties. See that is something that I have to work on because I do that a lot. I roll over pitches like that a lot. So that is something else that's like really one of those things that you just have to have to work on. Disciplining yourself to let pitches go if you don't see them well. And on top of that, just knowing you don't have to swing at everything. Like that's like that, for example, like that's close, that's close to the strike, but you don't have to swing at it. If you don't see it well out of the pitcher's eye, don't swing. You have three strikes for a reason. You know, there's no reason you should be swinging at every single pitch. You guys got to take pitches. You got to learn to take pitches. You got to learn to... Even if it's a strike, who cares, man? You got three of them. Like, if you see something over here, and it, you know, and you weren't expecting it, let it go. Because most of the time, if you panic swing, it's going to be a bad swing anyways. So, let it go. Take the pitch. You got beat once. Okay, that's fine. That is totally okay. I almost got to that. That wasn't a bad swing. I was just out in front of it. Um... You know, obviously I was early on it. Like I said, you'd rather be late than early on these pitches running away from you. You got to sit back on them. We still have the pitch sliders on, I believe, here. So, but yeah, that that's my big takeaway from this too. And I'm going to let the pitcher pitch a little bit. And I'm just going to talk to you guys briefly here on what my approach is. And, you know, before I'd say 21, I didn't really have an approach. I just kind of went up here. I swung the bat and that was kind of it. That's all I did. I was like, okay, if it's a strike, I'm going to swing. If it's a ball, I'm not. And that didn't work. Obviously, I wasn't one of the better players. You know, before 21, nobody knew who I was. And it kind of just didn't work. Like I said, it didn't work. So coming into 21, I wanted to be a competitive player. I was like, okay, so what can I do? I know that this pitch right here is the hardest pitch to hit. The inside sinker. And the inside pitches, they're the hardest pitches to hit because they're the hardest pitches to catch. If you can sit this right here and react everything over here, you're going to be one of the best players in the world. That is my opinion. If you can sit this over here and react to everything over here, you're going to be one of the best players. Here's why. If you can take away the inner half of the plate for anything righty on righty, it's very hard to pitch in this game. It is very, 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 very hard to pitch in this game. And the reason why I say that is because of how pinpoint has been. Everything goes on the outer part of the par. So taking away this part, if you can take away the dots that the rare dots that they do get or don't swing at, you know, if you're staying disciplined on this part of the plate, you're going to be insanely good as far as hitting goes. Now, as I said before, you're looking to react to these pitches. So, say, you know, you, like I said, these cutters. You have to sit back on these cutters. Most of the time, no, not a lot of people are throwing sinkers out here. I mean, if they are, toodles, you can get to these a lot easier than you can these inside ones. Pick it up a lot easier. But, personally, I am trying to sit on that inside pitch. And that is just because I do not want to get beat inside. I just do not want to get beat. I don't want to get jammed. And if you guys, you guys just got to work on your discipline inside too. Because you don't want to just be swinging at everything. So that drill I did with the sinkers and cutters earlier where you have to read whether it's a ball or a strike. That is something you guys need to do on a regular basis. I feel like 
that will help the most in distinguishing that. And then it'll actually help you hit the ball out in front because you're tracking the baseball. You're working on tracking it rather than reacting to it. So that is one thing that I am definitely working on myself on top of everything else that I'm telling you guys. Conclusion, guys, I hope these tips help you. I, I went through quite a bit in the video, so to sum things up, go to custom practice, do the drill we talked about in the beginning with the sinkers and cutters on the inside corner so you can start distinguishing those. That's the first thing. Second thing you guys want to do, get your settings right, make sure that everything's good there. Copy my settings if you want. Figure out a PCI you like, get comfortable with it, get comfortable with moving the PCI. That's step two. Step three, go to Legend difficulty, go to Hall of Fame difficulty, challenge yourself a little bit in custom practice. Make sure you guys are challenging yourselves because that is the best way to get better in this game. And on top of that, it helps you guys. Step four, you guys are gonna to wanna to make sure you guys get a monitor that can perform well, that has the one millisecond response time and the proper equipment to get you guys playing at the maximized level you can. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you guys like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm out. Peace.